Hi, I just uh, want to take a few minutes of your time uh, today and talk to you about uh, one passage of Scripture in the book of Genesis chapter 16. Uh, it's the story of uh, Hagar, and uh, of course she was the uh, slave of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Uh, before I, I get into that, I just want to uh, let you know how much uh, we miss you and we uh, want to to be able to gather together again in our church family. I don't know when that's going to be still, uh, and it seems like our, our governor may be giving hints that it's going to be extended, but uh, I want you to pray for our church, uh, pray for individual people in our church uh, who um, who need our prayers. And so we just ask that you would remember them pr uh, in prayer. Uh, pray also for me and Ellen and our family as we will pray for yours, that, uh, that we would be able to stay healthy and that uh, we'll be able to get back together very soon. I think a lot about uh, this situation that we're in right now, and we're kind of isolated from one another. And uh, one of the things that, that I'm learning is how important it is as a body of believers to be able uh, to, to be together, uh, to interact with one another, to talk to one another, uh, to be able to see each other face to face. And, and Satan's um, kind of his method of, of working in a church is to separate. Uh, he wants to isolate. We talk about social distancing. Uh, you know, that may be good as far as this virus is concerned, but it isn't good as far as the, the believers are concerned, as far as the local church. Uh, that isn't a good thing. In fact, we are warned about it. And I understand the situation right now. But we need to pray to the end that that this will come to a conclusion and that we'll be able to get back together again and minister to one another on a personal level. And I know there are cards that have gone out. People have taken food to people, run errands for people. And uh, that is just a, a wonderful thing. And uh, I'm so proud of our church for doing that. And and also we've had Sunday school classes that have met online. And uh, I'm thankful for that and for the willingness of teachers and workers to do that. But we need to be together. And so uh, I just ask you to pray with me uh, to that end, that we'll be able to get to be together again very soon. You know, Hagar was a slave girl and uh, we don't know a whole lot about her except her relationship primarily with Sarah, and that relationship was not good. Uh, Sarah was the wife of Abraham, of course, and she was promised that she was going to have a son. She was, uh, at the time she was promised, was probably about 70 or 80 years old, and she was promised this child, and the child didn't come and didn't come and didn't come. Until finally, she said to Abraham one day, why don't you just marry uh, Hagar and let her become your wife and I can have a son through her. It's kind of the first uh, written down uh, text or uh, written down thing about a surrogate motherhood and kind of an ancient surrogate is what she was. Well, she had a son. His name was Ishmael. And of course, it caused great jealousy, and Ishmael is the father of the Arab people. But before before she had Ishmael, she had an issue with Sarah uh, after the marriage to Abraham, and it was so bad and so stressful that uh, Hagar decided she was going to leave. And so she took off, and probably going back to Egypt where she was from, but she she runs off, and uh, the angel of the Lord, who was uh, a manifestation of the pre-incarnate Christ, met her at a well uh, there in the desert. And he asked her where, where she was going and what she was doing, and she told him that she was running away from Sarah. 
And the Lord told her, uh, Hagar, you need to go back to Sarah. You need to submit yourself to Sarah. She said, you are expecting a child. I want you to name him Ishmael, and he will be the father of a great nation and of a multitude. And, and she gave, he gave a little description of what Ishmael was going to be like. And when he was done with that, this is what I want to, to talk to you about today. In verse number 13 of chapter 16, it says, And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou, God, seest me. For she said, I Have I also looked after him that seeth me? The name that she gave to the Lord was El Roi, and it means the God who sees me. That is such a, an important name for God, and God reveals himself to us through his names uh, many times. And this was a name that Hagar gave to the Lord. And I think she was, she was overcome with the fact that the God of the universe would see her that he would pay any attention to her, that there would be any concern on his part for her. And so, so she names him El Roi, the God who sees me. Now I stop and think about this for just a moment. She was the lowest of the low. She, there, there was not one decision that we find in the word of God that that Hagar uh, really made on her own. She was always told what to do. She was always just a slave girl. And because of the mistreatment of Sarah, she did, she did decide to run away. But even at that, the Lord intervened and sent her back. But she was the, the lowest of the low. She was the loneliest of the lonely. And yet, God met her at this well to talk to her about her life, about her future, and about her need. And that, in, the, in this circumstance, as, as we sit in our homes and we don't get to get out and do things like we used to do, it just reminds me that the Lord knows where we are and the Lord knows what needs we have, and he meets us where we are, and he meets our needs. You know, it's a difficult thing to pastor a church that doesn't meet. Uh, it's, it's a difficult thing to minister to people that you can't really have any interaction with, and the Lord knows that. And he understands what we're going through right now. He understands what you're going through and the frustration that many are feeling at this time. And, and he is the God who sees us. He is the God who understands the needs that we have. And he is the God who will meet them. So as we sit in our homes right now and our outside activities are extremely limited. I want us to keep in mind as a church family that God sees us. I may not be able to see you. You may not be able to see me in person, but God sees us. Now that has both negative and positive implications. He sees the thoughts of our minds and our hearts. He sees the needs that we have. And he is able, abundantly able, to meet those needs. And so today, as you go about your business, whatever it is, and tomorrow, uh, as, as we sequester ourselves, let's remember that though we are separated from each other, we are not separated from the Lord. And he sees us. He is with us. Because nothing can separate us from the love of God. One of the great promises that he makes to us in his word. And whatever your need is today, wherever you are, it is the God 
of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of Hagar, perhaps, who sees us, who knows our need, and who desires above all things else to meet it. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful that you are the God who sees. You see me, you see those who are listening to this video on the internet today. You see us in our homes, at our work, in our car, in the interactions that we have with one another. You see all things and, and you meet us where we are. There are people today who are lonely. They're just tired of all of this. And they're very lonely and they're very hungry for the opportunity to be back in church again and to fellowship with your people. And I pray that in that loneliness and in that need and in that sense of isolation and frustration, you will meet them where they are, touch their life, remind them of your promises and, and heal them and bring, encourage them and, and bring us all back together again very, very soon. And we'll praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening for these few minutes. Um, don't forget this coming Sunday, I'm going to be talking about the second coming of Christ. I hope that you will, will join us, second coming of Christ in relation to the resurrection because the Bible links the two uh, and, and we'll try to explain that and talk about it this Sunday. Hope to see you then.